Um, so, <laughs> thank you very much. Good evening to you all. Assalamu alaikum. I am from Bangladesh and uh, I am the chairman of the Bangladesh Internet Governance Forum of Bangladesh, but at the same time I am member parliament and I am also the chairman uh, now of the Parliamentary Standing Committee on the Ministry of Information. Uh, I belong to a political party which is called Socialist Party and is in coalition with the present government. The Prime Minister is Sheikh Hasina. So we are in the government for the last 11 years. Uh, many years back, in 2009, uh, I was the chairman of the Parliamentary Standing Committee on the Ministry of Telecom and ICTs. So at that time, uh, many new laws are enacted to cope up with the digitization process. Our regulatory authority was changed into a modern system at that time. So having said that, I have been invited by the Afghan regulatory authority, Mr. Hashmi, the vice chairman, Bilal Hashmi, and the other Afghan dignitaries to moderate this session. Thank you all for participating in this session. Here with me in this session is Bilal Hashmi, vice chairman of Afghan Telecom Regulatory Authority, ATRA, Ms. Shabana, he, she represents Net Society. Mr. Arbab, he's the Commissioner of Access to Information of the Afghan Government. Then Zarguna, he is, she is the board member of the Regulatory Authority of Afghanistan. This meeting is organized by the Regulatory Authority of the Afghanistan. So having said that, uh, Bilal Hashmi, the Vice Chairman of ATRA, Regulatory Authority, will come up with a keynote speech and a statement. So I invite Mr. Bilal Hashmi to deliver his statement on the issue. Mind that the subject is how to digitize and connect internationally the landlocked countries. Afghanistan being a landlocked country, we will discuss Afghanistan, but the whole model is to be evolved how to address the problems of landlocked countries who doesn't have access to ocean seas to get the submarine cable networks connected. So we'll discuss Afghanistan, but we'll generalize it for all landlocked countries of the world. Thank you very much. Mr. Bilal Hashmi, please. Hello. I'm so comfortable when I'm standing, so I'm so sorry for time. Uh, thank you very much. Um, Turning opportunities or weaknesses into opportunities. Turning weaknesses into opportunities and turning weaknesses into strengths that creates opportunity is the key to success. A lot of people have done it. A lot of countries have done it. India and China, with the population of more than 2.5 billion has made these weaknesses and turned them into the strength and established and created the opportunity. Today, they are not creating and creating the jobs within their countries, but they are exporting. They are exporting the professionals, the expertise around the globe. And there are the factors 
for stability, our economic stability in their countries. My name is Bilal Hashmi. I'm a vice chairman of Afghanistan Telecommunication Regularity Authority. And it's my pleasure and honor to be here to present the topic under the landlocked countries, turning weaknesses into strengths that creates the opportunity. And thank you very much for all the, all the audience and respected government officials, private sectors, ladies and gentlemen. Before I go to the weaknesses and opportunities, let me introduce Afghanistan and the ATRA itself. Afghanistan is located at the central of Asia with a population of around 32 million and the, the area is 625,000 kilometers square. ATRA is the highest regulatory body for regulation or regulate the telecom sectors in the country. It was established in 2005 and became an independent body in 2017 that is the highest regulatory body in the country that regulates the telecom sectors in the country. We have five MNOs, the telecom operators, and we have introduced or launched 2G services back in 2003 and 3G services in 2012 and 4G in 2017. That is the statistics which comes from the ANISA, the statistics uh, institution, government institution. We have a GSM subscriber of around 23 million and a total subscribers of the data reached to around 30, 13 million. And the landlines is 133,000. Investment in this sector is 3 billion, which is the biggest investment in the country, in the sector of the telecom. A population coverage of 90% and a penetration of 72%. The weaknesses, yes, we do have the weaknesses, as I stated earlier, but that is not the population. It's the weaknesses of the security situations and the mountainous area, as the majority of the land is occupied by the mountainous areas, which can create problems to lay down, to lay the fiber, optical fibers, and the low bro broadband penetration. There is no submarine cable access, and the low literacy rate is the factors which we can call the weaknesses in our country. And as a result, the users are paying the high prices. Opportunity, it doesn't come to you. You have to create. It must be created. We have a digital hub. As Afghanistan is at the central of Asia, we can change Afghanistan and landlock into connecting country because we can use Afghanistan as a digital hub and the fiber for international and local licenses. The opportunities that we have is the IP transit. We can use Afghanistan as an IP transit. We did it before as a, as a transit for transport, as a transmission for the electricity, and the government have, has taken this initiative to go for the transmission or transit of the optical fiber and the IP transit, which connects the South Asia to the Central Asia and vice versa. The other opportunities that we do have is the infrastructures. Before, there was only one fiber, optical fiber company in Afghanistan. And back in 2017, ATRA, Afghanistan Telecommunication Regulatory Authority, and the government official has decided to change and create the opportunity by providing, by eliminating the infrastructure development monopoly, which was only one company in Afghanistan operating in the optical fiber. By having the op open access policy, now we have three more other fiber, optical fiber companies which are currently working in laying the fiber connectivity within the country. And for the other objectives of the opportunities that we have is facilitate investment and growth in the ICT sector. The government has already started 
investing in Afghanistan, and they are providing the facility for the FDIs and foreign investors, the visa on arrival and other opportunities so that they can invest in all sectors, especially in the telecom sector. The other one is the facilitate infrastructure to smart cities. As every country is going for the smart cities, the same Afghanistan is eager to go for the smart cities and the government is entrusted and eager to go for the smart cities. And there are long-term objectives or opportunities we have as well. The first is the open access policy that we have already started. And we have given licenses. In the second stage, we have the open access regulations that we already re developed the regulation for the open access policy or, uh, and, and provided the license for the fiber, optical fiber companies. There are three other companies who are now having the license and working in the optical fiber. The 4G spectrum is the other one, and we have Digital Casa. There are certain things that the government has decided in the recent years to change Afghanistan from the from the landlocked into the land-connected countries. We have done, in the electricity, we have introduced the digital casa. We have opened the roads and used them as a transit to, Middle East, uh, to the Central Asia, from the South Asia to the Central Asia. In the same way, it, 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 it's happening in the digital casa projects. In late in 2015, the World Bank Commission study determined the feasibility of the digital CASA project, which would connect Kyrgyzstan, Republic of Tajikistan, Afghanistan, and at the second stage, Iran and other countries, such as China as well. And this is the map that we have already connected uh, through the fiber, optical fiber, to many countries. ATRA is not doing only not regulating the sector in the country. We have some other services. We have the TDF fund, which is being funded, and we fund some government institutions which are very much important to us and for the development of the country. We have split them into four major areas. The rural communication development, the internet bandwidth, and the ICT labs and the telemedicine. These are the four major areas that we are funding the government institutions around the country. So far, we have erected 850 towers in order to access the telecom, telecom services in the rural areas. And also, we are funding the Ministry of Higher Education to facilitate the interconnectivity or connectivity services to the students at the universities and ATRA has funded this project and so far we have developed and connected 54 university, state universities and all the students are being benefited of those services that we have provided. Meantime, the Ministry of Education, we are giving around 30 million US dollars to Ministry of Education to facilitate and provide the services, IT and ICT labs we are developing and we are making the I ICT labs at different schools around the country to facilitate the students to get benefit of the IT services. And the 10-4 in Ministry of Education and the other one is the Health Ministry also. We are providing all the services to Ministry of Education. On average, up to 70 to 90 million USD is being funded to the government institutions in order to facilitate them for providing the services, the internet services, all the schools and universities. Yes, we have the, the way forward. Poster fiber deployment. As I said earlier, that we do want to change Afghanistan into transit as a transit country.
which can connect the Central Asia with the South Asia. And we have already taken those steps and we do provide all the facilities for the foreign investors and all the foreign investors are, some of the foreign, uh, foreign investors are interested to, 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 to take part, not only provide services to the country, but also use Afghanistan as a transit and provide those services and do business and invest for tr to use Afghanistan as a transit to other countries. Make Afghanistan more reliable for regional connectivity. Yeah, we do have the transit facility and we improve the competition. We promote digital inclusion. At last but not the least, we want to change Afghanistan from the landlocked country and to the land connected country. Thank you very much. Well, uh, give a hand to Mr. Bilal Hashmi. I hope you have got an overview of the Afghan digitization process. Uh, Afghanistan is doing very fine. By the way, I have not introduced myself. My name is Hassanul Haq Inu. Uh, so, uh, uh, the major important proposal from Hashmi is that uh, the landlocked country needs to be transformed into land-connected country. That is very interesting. Second, he said that Afghanistan can be a transit for other landlocked countries around the region. So Afghanistan become, can become a hub of telecom connections and optical fiber connections by that they can earn, then it is a business case. So that is a very interesting proposal. And uh, third, the telecom authority is opening up uh, the fiber optical uh, infrastructure development process to private sector, breaking the monopoly. That is a welcome news. So having said that, uh, uh, I invite uh, Ms. Shabana. She belongs to Internet Society of Afghanistan. Please. That is Internet Society, not International Society. Um, hello, everyone. This is Shabana Mansouri. I represent Internet Society Afghanistan. Uh, I'm also founder of a national program by name of Afghan Girls in ICT. Uh, my presentation will mainly focus on the gender perspective of uh, land on countries turning a weakness into opportunities. Uh, in order to make Afghanistan a digitized country, uh, a gender perspective uh, is crucial uh, for achieving this goal. Um, well, uh, to give you an overview of uh, uh, women state in the country, um, the total population of women is 49% uh, and female literacy percentage is 24.2%, which means 57.8% have uh, not uh, any formal education and are illiterate. Primary and secondary school enrollment is more than 3 million and public university enrollment is more than 63,000. Women's life expectancy is 46. Uh, years. Um, um, to tell you about uh, national priorities and programs uh, in the country, uh, we have uh, Afghanistan National Peace and Development Framework, which uh, explains the strategy of the country in order to proceed for development. We also have National Priority Program, which is uh, a bit aligned to the global SDGs. And in India, we have a specific uh, priority for women, which is called Women Economic Empowerment. 
And then we also have Afghanistan Sustainable Development Goals, uh, which is a specific community uh, which works towards is, uh, achieving SDGs. And it's co-chaired by Afghanistan uh, um, uh, President, um, Vice President Office. And for SDGs, UNDP is uh, also in charge of uh, achieving SDGs. Uh, and the committee uh, is chaired by the Ministry of Economy. Um, well, uh, about ICT stakeholders in Afghanistan, we do have uh, the uh, uh, approach of multi-stakeholder. Uh, we have involved the government, private sector, independent groups, uh, NGO civil societies, academy, and also international community. Uh, from government address, we have Ministry of Communication Information, Afghanistan Telecom Regulatory Authority, Afghan Telecom, and also National ICT Council of Afghanistan. From private, private sector, we have different ISPs, net, uh, network operators, and also private ICT uh, solutions companies. Uh, we do have NGOs and independent groups, uh, we, which are including Internet Society Afghanistan, uh, NetBuy Innovation and Technology Research Center for Afghanistan, and also IHAP uh, Afghanistan, which are initiatives uh, through independent groups. Uh, we also have uh, public universities and private universities, which works towards ICT, uh, uh, and we have donor agencies who are working uh, towards ICT, such as USAID, UN agencies, World Bank Group, ADB, and also uh, European Union. Uh, to um, talk about uh, women-specific initiatives or programs, I'm glad to represent here and, uh, and share with you a number of programs and initiatives which we have in Afghanistan. Uh, well, when we participated in a, a global IGF in Mexico in 2017, I remember uh, we had a presentation and there we only named one to two initiatives in the country which works um, towards uh, inclusion of women uh, in digital realization uh, of the country and also um, and uh, gender equality when it comes to discussion of ICT. Uh, we have Afghan Girls and ICT initiative in the country which works towards uh, um, um, involving more girls and women in ICT study and careers. Uh, there is another program which uh, names is Girls Can Code which is run through Humanity Foundation and International NGO. We have Take Women Afghanistan, Afghan Girls Robotic Team. We have uh, a Code for Peace program, which is run through UN Women. And we do have Afghan Girls Animation Team. Code to Inspire is another initiative, uh, which focuses on um, creating uh, girls with coding education. Um, uh, and we also, uh, we have also been um, uh, running ITU's International Day of Girls in ICT. We have been celebrating this, and it has been uh, celebrated through ATRA, the ministry, and also the local initiatives. Uh, well, uh, uh, it has been discussed many times in order to change Afghanistan into a digital um, country. Um, and when uh, the discussion of uh, gender uh, camps, we do uh, have um, some challenges. Uh, there are two um, important challenges. The first challenge is when you give attention to gender equality in ICT, and the second challenge is when you start the program. So the big major challenges we still have Although I named a number of programs and initiatives which have been running in the country, uh, we do lack still a policy change for women empowerment in ICT and um, lack of national attention and program for inclusion of women in ICT and lack of specific data, micro data in the state of women in ICT. Uh, we have been involved uh, in order to find solutions for these big challenges. And we have a specified solution in three uh, big and specific uh, points. 
we do need a supportive policy change and then advocacy for that in order to um, increase, um, in order to work more for gender equality in ICT, in order to achieve the bigger goal, the goal of uh, making Afghanistan a digitized country. We also need to um, um, have a national program such as uh, we have currently Women Economic Empowerment in the country, which is a national priority program. We do need a specific program, a national program, in order to increase more women in ICT in order to achieve the global, uh, the bigger law. And also, we also need support of international community um, in this uh, proposed solution. And. Uh, why we think that uh, more girls and women in ICT are important? Uh, because as uh, at represented that they are working towards uh, changing Afghanistan from a land-locked uh, country to a land-connected country. For that, we need to uh, consider gender perspective as well. Because gender equality in ICT is important and also ICT can work for gender equality at the end in the country. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Shabana Mansuri. Uh, you have got an overview of the women of Afghanistan and girls of Afghanistan. She emphasized on the issue of Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs 2030, where the United Nations and the member states have agreed to go for certain parameters to be achieved by 2030. One is gender equality. We in Bangladesh still lacking behind in the issue of gender equality. So she is focusing on the woman uh, community to be literate with ICTs. We call digital literacy. So, gender equality is a challenge, but when you apply ICTs, you need to develop an inclusive policy where the gen gender inequality is incorporated and the disadvantaged group is incorporated. She emphasized on this uh, issue that that means ICT application needs to follow an inclusive policy emphasizing on women and girls. Thank you very much. I hope Afghanistan will catch up with the present day world. By 2030, there will be gender equality in Afghanistan. I now invite uh, Mr. Arbab. He is the commissioner of a institute called Access to Information in Bangladesh we have an information commission set up by law, is an independent body. So we have enacted another law, right to information, RTI. So RTI gives uh, uh, the citizens, journalists, to seek any information from the government uh, machinery or the government officials also all the private sector where the Bangladesh bank is financing or the international community is financing. So they are bound to give information if a citizen asks for that particular information. So by that, a right to information allows a citizen to focus, his, uh, focus on the internal corridors of the bureaucracy. I hope Mr. Arbab is doing a good job. I invite Mr. Arbab, Commissioner, to access to information. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. I've been told that I have three minutes, so I'll just make it as short as possible. It's a little bit louder. OK, uh, thank you. Uh, when we are talking about uh, internet governance, actually, we are talking about uh, uh, transparency and accountability and public uh, access to information because it's their human right. Everyone should uh, have access to uh, government uh, holding the information. 
uh, and also to ensure uh, accountability and transparency what the government is doing for their public. Uh, having said that, in Afghanistan, luckily, we have one of the strongest law because according to Center for Law and Democracy Canada, out of uh, 150, we got 139 uh, points. Uh, so we have one of the best law, but when it comes to its implementations, we do face uh, challenges. Uh, to briefly speak about the challenges in Afghanistan uh, we are facing with the, the implementation of the law. Uh, the first thing is that uh, the lack of uh, public awareness, uh, because public should know about that it's their human right and they should approach government entities. Uh, another challenge is that uh, lack of accessibility in Afghanistan. In remote areas, people do not have access to internet. Uh, uh, the other problem is that uh, the digitalization of the information. Uh, uh, in Afghanistan, we are gradually progressing uh, towards that. Uh, we do have a number of uh, ministries, Ministry of uh, Agriculture, uh, Ministry of uh, RRD, uh, National Procurement Authority. Uh, they have somehow digitalized their data, so it's online, they have online uh, data system, so public have access to that. But when it comes to the rest of the government entities, most of them, uh, they do not have the data in a digital form, which is a challenge. So uh, uh, we hope that uh, in the future, when it comes to the implementation of the law, we will uh, push for the digitalization of the data. So not only the Afghan, the rest of the world, they have access to it. And we also hope and request IGF to, to do some lobby and push for it, because if you don't have strong law, uh, access to information law, then it becomes a challenge, because you may have data, and then there will be a culture of uh, secrecy. Because when it comes to government, government is to serve the public, whether it's a, in a digital form or other forms. So uh, once we have strong law, we will be able, and public will be able to have access to data. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Mr. Arba. You are doing a great job. Uh, the law is there, but the application of law is always a challenge. In Bangladesh also, we are, we are trying to educate the journalist community how to use this law for information. Because the general public, though many data is on the net, overboard, but uh, to seek information uh, uh, from the government machineries, uh, you, you must be a little bit, you should have initiative. So we advised that the journalist community can do this initiative, take this initiative, use the law that will help the government to be more accountable and transparent. So I think these challenges can be... Question answer session we have. No? After that, she will. Okay. So, uh, this is. Uh, 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 I congratulate Afghanistan because many countries does not have this law, right to information. Uh, in Bangladesh, we are considering uh, right to internet as one of the basic human rights is not yet been enacted in the constitution, but in the Scandinavian countries up in the north, some countries have already enacted this law into the constitution. Internet is like breath. You breathe in and breathe out. It's like water, life. So point is that, that right to internet, which is affordable, accessible, need to be assured by the government, so you have internet, you have a mobile phone, but you don't know how to use it. You don't have access centers. So right to internet is very important. I just give you this idea to discuss uh, so that the global community can come up with the basic human rights, right to internet, right to feed. Food is another basic right. So this is one thing I think we need to apply our brain and mind on this subject. Well. Uh, I uh, open the floor for question answering. If you have any questions, you can direct to it to the speakers or to me or anybody else. Thank you very much.
Well, it seems everyone knows what we were talking about. <laughs> Any query or questions? I think uh, the speakers are very self explanatory. So everything is very clear. So to, bre to break the ice, uh, I would uh, like to share some uh, words. I think uh, we have the honor that we have a previous uh, chairman of ATRA that uh, under his uh, leadership, the ATRA. Uh, Got the independency and uh, uh, welcome, Dr. Azizi. Uh, as uh, it has been mentioned in the presentation, uh, Afghanistan really started from a very devastated uh, infrastructure in services of telecommunication. And as you know, the country was uh, very war torn and uh, starting from scratch. And uh, one of the characteristics of Afghanistan was that. And it's not only Afghanistan, but also some other uh, uh, less developed countries could do so, that uh, in a very rapid manner, uh, uh, make growth of infrastructure, of services uh, in the country. And uh, one of the strategy that the country uh, successfully implemented so was a multi-dimensional approach for telecommunication sector. Uh, our lesson was very clear. Starting from that, we gave priority first for, for connectivity, and then focus on redundancy to make sure that the country, which is very mountainous, to be connected, and then focus on increasing capacity of uh, internet and then focus on access. After that, the country, especially the regulatory authority, focus on inclusion. We, in a very good manner, uh, approach the financial inclusion and also digital inclusion. Uh, now in Afghanistan, there are many uh, finance sector uh, players that are involved in uh, digital uh, economy, although this first steps, but uh, it's very good uh, uh, sign of future of the country that this inclusion will uh, uh, expand to the rural area. And now uh, government employees are receiving their salaries uh, through the network, the mobile networks, and uh, banks are using uh, uh, digital financing transactions inside the country and also outside. Uh, in regard to digital uh, uh, inclusion, we are focusing the public sector and also the remote area com communities. And uh, uh, so very successfully proceed uh, to achieve uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, very uh, important uh, needs to be uh, uh, fulfilled. And one thing which is very important, and that's characteristic of not only Afghanistan, but other uh, landlocked countries as well. Uh, Afghanistan has no access to uh, undersea cables. And uh, one of the things that we are seeking to tackle is how we can provide a virtual uh, point of presence in the country of the uh, major carrier, uh, which is also possible. Before this uh, session, we discussed with uh, Mr. Chairman uh, 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 that lead uh, this session. Uh, the region has uh, potential to do so Many of the countries in the region are uh, members of the World Trade Organizations. And there are some very clear principles that need to be applied. So uh, in a non-discriminatory manner, not uh, market of a particular country to rely on the neighboring. So we can do so and even think about the digital alliance in the region. So first starting 
bilaterally providing a ground for uh, uh, facilitating access to the internet, which uh, without that, uh, it's very difficult to talk about the global uh, internet uh, governance. So even at the global arena, there should be priority uh, to, to uh, 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 work closely with the country uh, in a manner that this uh, access uh, problem to be solved. And uh, we would like to call the countries are, uh, of the regions to uh, work together in a collaborative, in a cooperative way, those principles of uh, World, of trade, World Trade Organization to be applied in the region. Uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Professor. Uh, we are at the end of the session, but now uh, Zarguna will address you before she takes the floor. Uh, what I understood that uh, as a landlocked country, Afghanistan has certain problems, so also other landlocked countries of the world. Uh, there is a research uh, by experts that the undersea submarine cables connection is costlier than the land connected cables. But at the moment, Asia is not connected through land. Territorial connection is not there. So if we want to reduce the cost of the optical fiber networks, bandwidth, if you can switch over to the territorial fiber networks, then it will reduce the cost by one third almost. So the Asia is planning under the escape to develop Asian highway, almost finalized. So along the Asian highway, the stakeholders can, or the countries, can build a information highway from Beijing to the end of Asia, to Central Asia, then to Europe. So here, the major question is, when you build this terrestrial network. So what the professor has said, that if we don't follow certain global rules, then the internet connection, say coming from Iran to Afghanistan, if they block it, then you are dead, you are gone. So we must follow certain global norms that like water, India, Pakistan fought two wars, but the treaty on the Indus River was there and the water flowed. There was no disruption. So, internet is lifeline. Water is lifeline. So any agreement on internet in a landlocked country cannot be disrupted, cannot be cut off by the supplier country. So there should be a digital global alliance the WTO format can be used unless there is a new United Nations sponsored format on e-commerce and digitization process. So long we can go for WTO standards. So that is one thing. Second thing is uh, the infrastructure development is very important. So when you go for territorial connections, you need investment. If you cannot leave it to the private sector. These need to be assured from the government and international quarters that if you digitize the society, then you digitize the economy, you achieve 2030 SDG goals. So to achieve 2030 goals, every country, be it landlocked or not landlocked, should have the capacity of facilities for internet connections accessible to everybody. So this is very important. And then, uh, all the neighbors of a landlocked countries are bound to give internet connections to the landlocked country. It's a mandatory thing. So these are the issues to be taken at a global level. So I always say that internet is a global commons and a shared resource. In that case, we need, need four-tier planning. Global planning, national level planning, local level planning, 
and technological level planning. If we don't do this, then we are gone. But in this fourth tier planning, the major key word is inclusiveness, inclusiveness, inclusiveness. If inclusiveness is there, then you achieve the goal. If inclusiveness is not there, then we will not achieve the goal. Having said, I will ask Ms. Zarguna, uh, from the, she's a board member of ATRA. She will summarize the whole things. Thank you very much, Ms. Zarguna. Uh, it gives me immense pleasure to warm welcome you all. At the outset, I would like to convey my sincere gratitude to the uh, government of Germany and the CLDP for extending excellent host facilities and hospitalities to all participants. I heartily appreciate and respect for this vital forum. As the ATRA board member, I have observed the working method and sensitivity of the members to deliberate on the emerging issue of internet and landlock countries, which are a common interest to the telecommunication regulators in these countries. Uh, this IGF meeting attends countries collaboration, experience sharing, and best practices very important for developing common consensus to speed up the technological, economic, and social progress of the landlocked countries. The world, as we know, is rapidly changing, and so does the demand for digital services. It is the responsibility of regulators to lay down a conducive technical and business environment where digitization is embarrassed, service delivered with the quality, consumers are protected, and business communities facilitated. I believe all regulatory bodies endeavor to meet this challenge to the best of their abilities. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, it is extremely satisfying to share that we have been working hard toward bridging the digital divide by connecting the unconnected. Afghanistan holds the chance to considerably increase its socioeconomic indicators by fostering the development of broadband digitization in the main cities of the country. Broadband uh, penetration can be increased in many ways, including use of the Telecommunication Development Fund to develop rural communication networks by providing subsidies to universal access projects. ATRAI is going to work in all uh, three sub-dimensions of coverage, performance, and affordability in order to promote connectivity. The following recommendations are demonstrated in the ATRA ICT roadmap in Afghanistan. Create, accelerate, and collaborate in the development of the sector. Promote private investment through simplification of the licensing system. Implement open access and telecommunication development plans. Establish the basis for a knowledge-based society in Afghanistan. Promote the information technology usage in the public and private sector. Improve the level of security and safety for the end users. Promote and develop human capacity. Increase penetration and utilization of ICT among citizens. I would like to thank all Afghanistan delegates and the experts from different countries for uh, their tremendous attendance in ATRA's session. Healthy discussion and opening sharing. I believe that this diverse group interaction between professionals of different countries can give further impetus to the Afghanistan. At the end, I would like to thank the IJF organizers and CLDP for their continuous support. I wish all the delegates a successful meeting and pleasant stay in beautiful city of Berlin. Thank you very much. Okay, Ms. very much. Uh, I congratulate all the participants and the uh, discussions uh, for your kind attention and uh, help me to moderate this session. Thank you all. Salaam Alaikum. <laughs>